I have a passion. I have a passion for plastics. I love those materials so much that I even have them tattooed. But you all might think, wait, wait, she's going to talk about smart plastics? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Plastics aren't smart, are they? After all, plastics are everywhere. They produce a lot of waste and pollution. All we can do is just recycle them, or at least some of them. But yet, plastics are all around us. We use them each and every day. Imagine for just one second a life completely without plastics. You would be probably sitting naked on the floor. The chairs you're sitting on, made of plastics. Your, your shirts, your shoes, your pants, made of plastic and plastic fibers, maybe from recycled plastic bottles. When you want to go home after the event, guess what? You will be walking, naked of course, because your cars also contain a lot of plastic parts. That means plastics are very useful, but are they any smart? In order to answer that question, we need to understand what plastics are actually are. In fact, they belong to a larger group of materials, so-called polymers. So, what does polymer stand for? Polymer means many parts or many repeating units. By combining different building blocks or monomers, how we call them, we can create larger structures, the polymers. In a sense, it's like this paperclip here. One paperclip represents a monomer. By combining many of those paperclips, we can make polymer chains. Oops, well, that's broken. Anyway, so we can combine those paperclips in many, many different ways. I can make short chains like this. I can make many, ma much larger chains. I can branch them. I can even link them in three-dimensional networks. I can choose to use large paper clips like this or smaller ones. I can even use blue ones, green ones, red ones, you name it. All that changes the overall properties of our materials, of our plastics. I can make them very elastic and stretchable like a rubber band. I can make them very stiff and rigid like plexiglass. What would you think if I told you that polymers are not just around us, but that they're even inside us. Look at your fingernails, your hair. They contain collagen, and collagen is made of many amino acids. Deep inside us, in each and every cell, the molecule of life, DNA, that is a polymer. It's made of many nucleic acids. We even eat polymers, believe it or not. Let's think about french fries. They're made of potatoes, right? Potatoes contain a lot of starch, and starch in turn is made of many carbohydrates. So you see, by combining those paper clips in so many different ways, we can create so many different things. But now you ask, okay, I get it, polymers are cool, but how do we make them smart, and how smart can they actually be? Well, pretty smart. Well, maybe not as smart as you and me, but pretty smart after all. So now, now I'm going to talk about smart plastics and their uses and applications in the biomedical field, because this is what we do in our lab here at UNT. There are already some very clever applications for polymers and plastics in the medical field. They're used as wound healing patches for burn wounds. They can be used as targeted drug delivery systems in cancer therapeutics, for example. Polymers can also be used as actuators in artificial muscles or in stents. In this case, we can make them very small and bring them into the body um, applying minimal invasive surgery that minimizes the burden for the patient. But then inside the body, they would deploy and then fulfill their function. This type of material is a stimuli-responsive polymer. We call it shape-memory polymer. 
These materials are so smart, in fact, that they can remember a previous shape. Let's say we have a flat sheet of a polymer film, and we transform it, program it into a temporary shape. Let's say we curl it up. Now the material stays stable in this shape until we apply the certain stimulus, the trigger. In our case, it would be hot water. So now watch what happens to our shape memory polymer when you put it into the water. It starts to unfold. It remembers its previous flat shape. And that is pretty amazing, isn't it? Now you may understand my passion for those materials, hopefully, a little bit better. You may even know shape memory polymers from your life without even noticing. Many of you or your kids may have played with those shrinky things, these plastic foils where you can paint on, then you put them into the oven and bake them. They shrink and you use them to make jewelry and things like that. Another application are heat shrink tubes. They are used to insulate cables and wires. Here again, we use temperature as a stimulus to let them shrink on and insulate the cables and the wires. And these materials are nice because they can also conform to much more complex surface structures and geometries, like, a th like the thread of a screw here, for example. And this brings me now to a very personal story. A family member of mine needed to go or undergo a colon resection. That means part of the colon needed to get removed. After such a surgery, the two remaining parts of the colon need to get reattached. They get usually sutured or stapled together. But I have learned that, unfortunately, after such a procedure, there are some risks. It can happen that there is leakage outside into the abdominal cavity. That means feces can leak out, and this can be very detrimental, sometimes even fetal. So I was very afraid, right? And, and thought, there must be a better way. And I thought, wait, you know about polymers. And I remembered those heat shrink tubes. And I thought, what if? What if we could translate that concept of the heat shrink tube to the biomedical field? We could potentially use those polymers to seal organs like the intestines and other body parts after surgery and injury and thereby we could potentially help a lot of patients. And this is actually what we do in our lab now. We transform those heat shrink tubes to the medical field. But how do we do that? What do we need to do? Well, first and foremost, we need to make sure that the polymers, the plastics we are using, are safe for the use in a human patient. These materials should not be toxic, should not cause any harm or unwanted side effects. That means we need to make the material biocompatible. Another very important factor is that we need to change the stimulus. I guess no one of you wants a surgeon to go in, apply a heat gun 400 degree Fahrenheit to your intestines, right? Not too good. So this is why we need to change the stimulus. We make our polymer to respond to bodily conditions. That means it will shrink in, through the body temperature and a little bit of moisture surrounding. You may notice that in the very end, the polymer is vanished. We also built in biodegradability. We do this because after such a surgery, for example, after some weeks, wound healing is accomplished. And then this polymer would no longer be needed. Traditionally, you would do a secondary surgery to remove it, but that's also not good, right? Every surgery is a risk. So we design our material to vanish over time. And of course, we're making sure that the degradation products are safe as well. We can make those materials even smarter. We can incorporate drugs into the material, like anti-inflammatory drugs that further promote the wound healing, or antimicrobial agents that prevent infections. You see, we can make those materials multifunctional and smart in many ways. But how do we make those polymers? Well, basically, we go back to square one. We play again with our paper clips. Now, we need to 
choose the right paper clips in the right way, how we connect them in order to create those biocompatible, biodegradable, awesome polymers. So this is actually a prototype from our lab that is about three inches in diameter and that would fit hopefully perfectly well around a colon. This is only a prototype. We are still at the early stages of the development of this new technology. But imagine the possibilities. We could help so many patients worldwide, and not only for gut surgery, right? This technique, we could apply it for so many other parts within the body. Blood vessels, for example, other organs, you name it. By using these smart polymers, we can change. We can change the life of so many patients, and hopefully we can even save lives. I hope that I could convince you that polymers and plastics can be smart, and that we can use them in very, very smart ways. Thanks for listening.